and also, uh, you. This is such a sweet story, and I, I, you know, you were right. It's the best worst thing that ever happens because yep. it created a whole incredible career that you've been so successful and you're so generous to help out like our local national speakers chapter and so many speakers. But also tell us about a twice adopted. I love that. I think is that the name of it or do you have the book cover? Well, the, the the new book that that's written now in edit process is called Adopted Twice, but okay. So it, when I was born, I mean, you know, like born <laughs> um, <laughs> Should I cover women, my kitty's ears? Is this no, going to no, be no, rough? No. I, I, I won't. I won't give you anything that your kitty can't handle. Okay. But when I was born, uh, my mother was nineteen. Mm -hmm. um, she was unwed. My father was wed. I was illegitimate, and her father told her. He said, "You know, you either keep the little kid, and you're out of the family, out, 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 never to come back, or wow. put him up for adoption. But he ain't gonna be in our family." So, so at birth, I was adopted. Now, Jane, I was adopted to a wonderful, wonderful mother and father. People that loved me, cherished me, could not have asked for better. My dad died when I was two from diabetic complications, but, but it was, it was a great uh, childhood. It was great to be wanted. But by the time I was 27 years old, before my first son was born, I was sitting there thinking, you know, I'd kind of like to know biologically who I am. Who am I? Mm -hmm. And now you and I've lived long enough to know that 23 and me didn't exist back in the 80s. Okay. Mm -hmm. So 27 years old, I decided I need to find out. So I, I, I called the diocese through whom I was Episcopal diocese through who I was adopted. And they said, we quit doing that in 59. We don't have any records. And eventually I found a judge that was sympathetic to adoptee children. He said, I'll open the records for you. Wow. And that's great. I wanted to know biologically what made me tick. Frankly, I wanted to know if I was going to keep my hair because I used to have a forehead. It's going to a five head, six head, seven head. It just keeps sliding back. It's very sad. But <laughs> anyway, but the only thing in the records were mother's name, birth date, birthplace, father's name, birth date, birthplace. That's it. And it was like, oh, man. Well, let me see. Can I find them? In six hours, I found both of them. <gasps> no. Six hours. That's wonderful. So with my biological mother, I turned out to be her only child ever. Oh, wow. Now, I was the only child for my adopted mother. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when I found my biological mother, she wanted to see if there maybe is a possibility of a relationship and, and, and I'm kind of the spitting image of this woman. And so we developed a wonderful relationship such that when my, and I use this term to, so people make sense. When my adopted mother died at my age of 47, my biological mother looks and she says, you know, you have no legal standing in my life. I mean, I gave birth to you, but by putting you up for adoption, you're no more than a, a stranger at Walmart. Would you be willing to be readopted? Oh, Chuck. So at the age of 47, I walk into the courtroom with my biological mother, who was 19 years older than me at the time. And when the judge said, and where is the child? I raised my hand, which <laughs> where the poor judge, he pulls his glasses down on his nose and looks and he's like, what? <laughs> but. Oh. So, so I have been adopted twice. Now I'll say this just for the sheer joy of it. I was an only child twice with my adopted mother and my biological mother. Turns out both mothers during their lifetime had four marriages each. So I could have had four daddies on adopted mama's side. I could have had four daddies on my biological mother's side. Didn't know any of them. Could have had one daddy that was biological daddy, but didn't know him either. So I could have had nine daddies, but I had no daddies, but two mamas and an only child twice. So when people ask me, why is he so messed up? Y'all, I came from a dysfunctional family. I'm just going to tell you on the front side. <laughs> Fun love. But oh, I have a friend that discovered his uh, biological family as well. And he's a very professional, very dapper was adopted by the most wonderful people. And as he was sharing that he found his family, 
I probably shouldn't have said this, but I looked at him. I said, God is merciful because they are very different. <laughs> well, in fact, really, it was a blessing in his yeah. life because he was able to do incredible things with great opportunities. And there were lots of siblings. And um, the story is very sweet. But you know how God works. I mean, Absolutely. seriously, what a what a blessing for you. So now, are any of these folks still with us on Earth, or have they departed? No, no all of them at this point. My biological mother died in 2017, so so they've all departed. Which which sad on that end, and also sad that as I look above me to heaven, there's nobody before ahead of me. So it's like, oh, I'm the next to go. And being in the funeral business. <laughs> get reminded of that kind of often, but they're, they're gone. I will tell you, Jane, DNA is amazing. When I was 27, I was a CPA and I just gotten my pilot's license. And when I found my biological parents, my mother was an in insurance and finance and my father was a pilot. And it was like, no way, no way. That is strange. So beautiful. I yeah. love that. Oh my gosh. So